Okay, so this is the uh, this is what they're seeing in the right eye, and this is what they're seeing in the left. So, what do you think the chief complaint is here? Is uh, floaters, floaters, spots. Yeah, okay, perfect. This is the uh, right eye. I'm like to be quick with tell me what you see here in the actual photo. The cornea does look kind of skinny, doesn't it? There's a poor light reflex and the conjunctival injection, a little bit of ptosis. Okay. And that one looks nice and white. Better this, one's, this one has been pharmacologically dilated. Okay. It hasn't. So that's not affected, that's affected. Oh, okay, so that one looks a little better, but there's a little more ptosis. There's an arcus. Which there. eye is this? This is the right eye. More kind if of it's a horizontal line scan. And it looks uh, nice, normal. And what's the vision? Oh, 20, 20. Yeah. Okay. And then this is the affected eye. Left eye. So it's a horizontal line scan. There's no PVD. There's rare vitreous cells in the outer retina. It doesn't look perfect. It's a little bit ragged at the receptors. Um, and the inner retina's got some undulations there. Is that mine? Use yours. Okay. Yeah, the inner retina's got some undulations. Okay, and what about, so, oh, crap, I get that way, okay. 10, 25. So what about this, do you think the thick eye, you can't see it there, um, but on the PowerPoint you can, it's the scale here, and I lined up the RBD line. What do you think about that? I don't think that's thickened. I think that's just the, it's a different algorithm. There's, there's different algorithms in the machines. Okay. So, so Perhaps that's the case. I did a thicker snap over it and it came out oh, thicker. Oh, that does look thicker. Um, okay. You don't use this heat, heat map much? I love this. Yeah. Patients can see the colors easily. And that one actually looks thin. That's a lot of blue. It almost looks like something happened to yeah, the right eye. Yeah, I have 242 central thickness and 202 over here. Okay. Yeah, it's so a little bit hotter by the nerve. Uh, yeah, look, the undulations. I won't be surprised if there's a little pucker up there. Dragging things up, maybe. And then here's their color fun display. No, the right eye was normal. So That's pretty. I want to get that camera. So, uh, <laughs> can you describe this photo for us? So, there's a uh, the nerve looks good, the vessels look reasonable, and then over here there's a large lesion. And it's uh, a lot of yellow, stellate yellow exudates, suggesting it's probably been there for a while. It might even be getting better sometimes when you see that much exudate. And it, it looks like an angioma. There's hemorrhage down here, but it's, I don't see a perfect feeder. I, I yeah. enhance the contrast here. Yeah, that's probably got a feeder and a drainer somewhere in there. So the cells are probably hemorrhage. And then uh, we got a P-scan. Oh, nice. Plus that thing. Yeah, so there's an elevation there. It's not huge. It's probably uh, one to two millimeters, maybe two millimeters, one and a half millimeter elevated. It's a pretty good scan. You don't get much of a reflection off the surface. It's nice, nice to see a little more of that. The choroid around it looks okay. I don't see anything else in the sclera. And you can see something draped over it, which is probably retina, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of subretinal fluid there because it's exothick, I think. Okay. Another cut. Yeah, you're picking up a little bit of fluid maybe there, so there's a little bit of serous detachment there. Yeah, that was where that was in the show up. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. Okay, there you go. So that would be your, this is the arterial phase, and you can see a dark, I'm assuming that's a vein crossing there, and so you can see a lot of flow to the, a lot of flow through the artery. Do you think this is, um, uh, so is this filling earlier than this, or do you think it's just? Yeah, it looks like you're definitely. Yeah, that's not as bright. So these guys aren't as bright. So you got a little early, early and excessive designated uh, prefer preferential. I'm not sure the right word. Flow. I like preferential. Yeah, preferential. And so then what about this here? This dark area. Oh yeah, that's blocking some from the exudate fluid, and I guess some hemorrhage. There's probably a little hemorrhage in there. Um, yeah, and then it lights up, and you would say that, I'm not sure now where the veins were, but the, um, definitely you got vessels going to it and away from it, and a large cuff of darkness around it. And you do get vascular remodeling away from it, which is interesting. I've seen that before. I hope I have the right diagnosis. We, we, the diagnosis was a little, we weren't quite sure. 
Okay. And I sort of went out on a limb with what I think it is, but don't say it just yet. We're good. It looks um, a lot like something. So here, here, five minutes. <laughs> uh, okay, and then the, the fluorescein's fading everywhere else. This is still a lot of residual fluorescein. And Seven uh, minutes. you're seeing diffuse leakage of fluorescein from everywhere, which I think is just when the eye's a little bit inflamed. I think something like this releases all the blood. The blood attracts inflammatory mediators, and you just get sort of diffuse leakage from an inflamed eye. So yeah, so it's not like there's two separate entities, like a potent symbol, but UVIS and also that would mass. be a lot. I know I would say that would be a like lot that. for one eye. So they actually came in as a referral. Yeah. Um, for for UVIS. UVIS. Oh. Yeah, on your own. That's why you gotta look before you get it. But yeah, yeah it's. So yeah, I could see where someone would say that though. And I was going later. We're going to talk about that, you know, in macular edema cases. A lot of, the retina tends to light up when the eye is not happy. Yeah. Okay. So the differential. Are you, I, so I'll give you my different. Are you, you give retinal me gastric. Well, I, I would, like I'd say it looks like like an angioma. Then you've got um, I guess you could say uh, a hemangioma, or you could say it doesn't look like um, um, cavernous. Hemangioma is another one, but that's the phacomatosis, which doesn't look like that. And then other things, I guess it could be a granuloma. It could be, it would have feeders. You wouldn't have feeder vessels to a granuloma, but it could be that there was a, there's, there's primary and secondary angiomas. And that's where, like, if it's the patient had a buckle or an injury or something where so there's. I think you're referring to what I, I think of as a vasoprolific prolific tumor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So good. So this is the mnemonic. I don't know if y'all read this for no. residents. I have a body tumor. So this is who's this? Queen. Queen Elizabeth. Then so she's British. She's a, you know English. So. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I've read somewhere that Queen Elizabeth has someone who breaks her shoes in for her. <laughs> Would that be an interesting job? You'd have you'd have really fancy shoes, but they'd never you be comfortable. That. You could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really space things out in time. But so she's actually got a uh, bloody tumor. You know, oh, she I, does. I won't tell you what it is. You can look it up afterwards. But so that's why the mnemonic is this. Cause it's just. So perfect. I have a bloody tumor. H A V is the mnemonic, and bloody for the bloody tumor. Hemangi this hemangioma, ABM, and then BPT. So hemangioma, there's there's really four types. I didn't. There's two retinal types and two colloidal types. I left the colloidal out for whatever reason. Um, uh, retinal capillary is what you see with a retinal capillary hemangioma. You see with DHL. Uh, retinal cavernous, you see um, like the grapes. Cluster of grapes, and then the colloidal is obviously going to be look deeper. So um, I think what do I have next? Okay, so this is just like a quick exercise to look at some of those tumors. So this person comes in and says, "I have a bloody tumor." Uh, what do you? What is, which one of those is it? Is it hemangioma, uh, AV, AV malformation, or a BPT? Yes, yeah, so it. Capillary yeah, hemangioma. Yeah, capillary hemangioma, nailed it. Okay, what about this one? Oh, that's the A of ABM or BPT. That's the phacomatosis. That's the cavernous hemangioma. Cavernous, yeah, perfect. Right there. Cluster of grapes, right? Yeah, cluster of grapes. Those are, I've never seen one of those. They're super rare, just pictures of them. Okay, what about here? I'd love to see one. Those are. This is, these are, this is a monozygotic twins that had bilateral tumors like this in, in the same spot. Um, <laughs> So this is like vasoproliferative, I exactly, guess, yeah. we're getting there, but how do you differentiate the, those are reactions, those are secondary, you think, or those are just more scar tissue? Uh, I, I don't know, I don't know if they were secondary or not, okay. I'm not sure. Most are, we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay. Let's keep going, so what's that one? Oh, uh, Wyvern Mason. Wyvern Mason, yeah, in my, in my mnemonic here, it's a uh, mangioma, and it's, or, I'm sorry, it's an ABM, or the other name for it is, uh, the other name. Oh, uh, resinous. Yeah, I never had to say it. I always say resinous. Yeah, okay. Um, and then what about that one there? Hemangioma, ABM, or a um, BPT? Colloidal. Oh, Colloidal hemangioma. Perfect. Okay. Chris, you want to do one? This person has said I have a bloody tumor. What's that? Retinal capillary hemangioma. What's that one? Sorry, I can't really see it. Racemos. Racemos, which is a ABM yeah. for a mycoma. And then what's that? Hemangioma, ABM, or yeah. BPT? Yeah, I got the cluster. Cluster all there. And so that's a, that's a that's cavernous tumor. So cavernous, because these, these vessels are like caverns, they're massive compared to this thing here. Yeah. Maybe it's not so much the feeder vessel that I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of that as the tumor is like, um, the, you know, here's your hemangioma with the, with the feeder vessel and the drainer, but yeah. this is a, is a huge, you know, just as big as this, but that's not a 
cash value you know, that's like a arterial over there. Yeah, this one. This is before and after uh, procedure. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 That's a nice prolific. Yeah. This is, didn't come out that well. That's a corolla. Perfect. Okay. And the apotritis. Again, this is the last one. ABM. ABM, perfect. I have a bloody tumor with that one. Are you in the same picture? No, it's different. <laughs> it did look similar. That's good. That you're thinking of the ranch. What, what, what type? Uh, cathode or something like that. Mm -hmm. Cavity. Cavity. Uh, yeah, I found that one. That's similar to there. Perfect. And there's two types of coil. There's um, well defined. Diffuse, the Sturge Weber. That's the, the, there's the huge ones you can't really see that well. And then there's there's another word for this type. Um, it's like it's another word that gets well defined. Yeah. So what's the diagnosis? You know, pretty similar. I, I would call it. I call it yours. I call it a VPT. Oh. Um, so this I don't the, separate them. I usually call them both the man's. So, but it's, uh, it's obviously a different entity compared to this and yeah. this and this. Well, no, it looks like that that one. That's just more mature. So you you so tell me about that. Tell me because the feeders, I usually don't differentiate based on proliferative. I'm not sure where the where the cutoff would be because they're both. I do primary and secondary capillary hemangiomas. Secondary meaning there's something that caused it. Primary meaning it just came out of nowhere. Okay, well, we'll talk about it a little bit. So and this then, is from the shield. Yeah retinal phase of the tumor and um, so uh, you don't have to I'll just read this you don't have to uh, look up here so it's really good stuff um, so unusual but uh, retinal vascular tumor uh, producing exited retinopathy um, it was initially termed uh, presumed acquired non-familial retinal hemangioma oh yeah in See, the I'm old, so that was they changed it yeah um, uh, the classification of the tumor was proposed with specific variation for uh, the clinical features and related underlying ocular conditions. It was recognized that the vascular mass involved not only the retina, but occasionally the RTE and the Polaroids, so it was renamed the base DPT of the ocular fundus. Um, in addition to these reports, the cell location that was recommended to understand the tumor. Um, so there's two types of DPT. It's the idiopathic or the primary, then the secondary, uh, the three quarters of their primary. Um, both primary and secondary are typically infratemporal. Or some super uh, temporal, um, and they, ha they can have that CRSRD, uh, and they can have macular edema as well. Um, and then uh, there was another. You might be able to read this after filling. Uh, it says the tumors uh, in question. So what is a VPT? If you look at it under the glial uh, cells, the cells, yeah, the glial cells with a fine capillary network. Um, and there's also other cells in there, like giant uh, giant cells are present. But the point is that it's more of a glial tumor. Uh, with um, you know its own messed up uh, uh, capillary as opposed to a, a big um, mass of uh, capillary. That's the way I think about it, at least. And that's why I sort of have. They look kind of whiter in your pictures. Yeah. Um, yeah. To me, it looks you know much. It looks a lot different. But then now that thing started to exude a bunch, and you had a whole bunch of. If you had all this exudate stuff, then it would look pretty similar, except for. You don't have this huge feeder and huge drainer, you know. And all the ones that I looked at, you didn't have that feeder and drainer. And I don't know if that was something that would also sort of exclude it. So I think if you look at this under microscope, you'd see a lot more. Yeah. Uh, um, that's a weird feeder and drainer. You don't see that very often, even with regular hemangiomas. That's a big one. So um, I'm, I was calling it a VBT, and then, uh, so I, I don't know. Oh, you're a patient. Okay, yeah, it could be a BTD. Um, so treatment, you mentioned one treatment. Usually you have to try to laser and cryo. Yeah. Typically, it's, it's hard to get them. I was reading you can do very well, have laser, you can observe on my studs, PTT I read in one case. I don't know if PTD, I don't think PTT, PTT has enough punch. Laser has trouble getting the depth. Cryo works. We used to do a triple freeze thing, where you freeze it, like wait, mm -hmm freeze it all the way through, wait, and freeze it all the way through again. And that seems to really knock them down. The one thing when you cryo these is it's not uncommon to get a nasty exudative detachment mm. the first couple weeks, which subsequently goes away. 
Yeah. So you can that is so close to them, but you have to if you just warn them. It's always it's always good to warn the patient before you do anything that they might lose vision for a month. That's what I do. <laughs> That's my new routine. And that way, when they come in, they're not like because they have there's a lot of anxiety around the vision loss. So I. But that's in my understanding of those is they don't get better, they usually just get worse. Although the VPTs, again, might be, I have to brush up on that, that might be a different category. But for the most part, if there's fluid, it's not going to go away. It's just going to get more and more. So the, and it's harder and harder to treat the more fluid you have. So we lasered it. She came back a month later in the B scan. So it doesn't look a whole lot different here. It's got a little plane beam there or whatever. But you notice any difference? Yeah, the fluid's gone. Okay. Yeah, so the serious RV. And you can chip on. away at them. It doesn't have to be one treatment. You mm -hmm. could laser and then laser and then laser. And yeah. especially if you have a red laser, if you have an old TTT laser to get deeper. The hard part is getting deep enough. But again, if you laser it, wait a while, laser some more. You don't want to poke a hole through it with the laser, which yeah. would be pretty easy, I think. Yeah. It's been lasered a couple of times, and this yeah. is a, a little over a month in terms of the resolution of the serious RV. Yeah. But so what would, what's the end goal? Get rid of the fluid. Get rid of the fluid. The extra day will take a while. You don't expect there to be, um, you know, the mass to disappear all of a sudden. No, you probably want to shrink it up, and you probably don't want to induce a ton of fibrosis around it. That's the thing. These can go south a bunch of different ways. So they, because I think maybe that's more the VPTs. You can't read on that. But uh, one thing that happens sometimes when you mess with these is all of a sudden they start to get this fibrous proliferation around them, um, which seems to be worse. But the uh, the laser, you realize your laser only penetrates, you know, half millimeter maybe. The laser penetration or maybe a millimeter. The tumors, so like that's a big thing with lasering melanomas in your, your tumor penetration. Your uptake's not gonna be very good because it's white. So it's a challenge lasering these. So just use a big spot and really long duration. So let's say she comes back in a few months and she's got some more fluid. Would you, uh, would you cry out of this? That looks like a place where I can probably do it. But laser is gentler. I mean, I'm not sure based. I know the fifty those Claris pictures. That's pretty far out, I think. But but laser is a laser is much gentler if you can get away with it. And especially again, the green laser is not so good on this because the blood's going to block it. If you have something where you can flip to red or to infrared, those lasers are nice. You guys might have that. Did you do you know what you lasered it with? You're using uh, an indirect laser. It was green, but I don't know for sure. It was I'm green. Sure. It might have been the I've old. I've always seen the green. Okay, because we used to, they, you guys probably somewhere have an old TTT laser. We were well, using those back in the... We've got a new fancy one that I think can probably do everything that... Everything you want to do. Yeah. yeah. You can change it though. So, because the longer wavelengths will go deeper. Oh, there you go. So maybe we'll do that. Yeah, just long, slow, but you don't want to pop the hole. Okay, so the take-homes are pretty simple. The mnemonic... When you see a bloody tumor, because that's someone saying, I have a bloody tumor, and you may be on whether it's four types, and you know, four types is how I typically do it, AGM and a VPT. And then also the second take home, I would say, is what's a VPT, and it's it's a little bit different than the other than the hemangiomas and the um, ABMs, and that it's not so vascular. It's more glial, um, but it is at the same time, it's still bloody. Um, and then, yeah. A question. Well, one of the big things on these always comes up is do they have von Hippel Lindau? Yeah, so that's this she had an MRI and a, you know, she had old, um, they took out her kidneys and her brain. She didn't have any cerebral or cerebellar. Cerebellar is typically where it is in the CMS. Um, lesions and she didn't have any uh, kidney problems. She didn't have any family history or anything. Yeah. But so I wonder after looking at this, you know, is it, do we necessarily need to get one? If you're sure it's a VPT, I would have trouble with that. I'd have to really, I mean, they're all rare. Yeah. The shields is can say whatever, whatever the shields is say is always considered correct. It's like when someone sees me and I say, oh, it's, there's no retinal tear, I'm considered the gold standard. So yeah. there's by definition, no retinal tear. Yeah. So when the shields is say it's a VPT, that, that means there's, that's what it is. But for somebody out in the outside of wills to say that's a VPT and not, Get testing. You can get genetic testing now, which is pretty good. Yeah. For von Hippel and down. Yeah. And um, the uh, you know I was looking up BPT, seeing case reports and pictures and little um, things online. It was not uncommon to see you know this uveitis presentation going out there. And then you always you always had this real similar picture with the uh, with the exudation and the lack of a super impressive feeder, um, but. I, I, as opposed to when I look at the other hemangiomas, they all sort of look more of a different. Um, but uh, anyhow, okay.
So these are eyes just for just we the first year so we appreciate that these are bloody tumors and then these are non bloody tumors. Um, so oh, actually Dr. Bond, you can tell me what they are. Oh. <laughs> no, looks like it. Looks like it. No, 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 that's a late one. Oh, that's a retinoblastoma. Okay. Is, okay. Is, that, is that one of our lymphomas? It's more like a lymphoma or a metastasis or... Yeah, it's lymphoma. Probably okay. chalk to the lymphoma. Yeah, the most that. common, that looks like lymphoma. How, how do you differentiate a Nori disease from a retinoblastoma? Nori's? Yeah. Or you get a big gray yellow bolus. Well, this is more vascular, right? So it's more... Retinoblastoma is now the one we have more is Coats disease versus retinoblastoma, where the, when the retina is detached with Coats disease, and I, I think with Nori's, you, co, retinoblastoma does not have retinal vascular anomalies, yeah. nor do they, nor do they get a cataract. There's all these things retinoblastoma eyes don't get. They don't get exudate. They don't get cataract. They don't get retinal vascular anomalies. So what you do is you look real hard for retinal vascular anomaly. One thing retinoblastomas do get is calcifications. Mm -hmm. So you look real hard for calcifications, and if you see calcifications, you're like, oh, that's a retinoblastoma. And then the other thing is multifocal and age, age of onset. Because Nori's would be, I don't know much about Nori's, but Nori's you're born with. Mm -hmm. So it would come out much earlier and much harder, whereas the retinoblastoma you're born with, but it really has to grow a little bit. So the point of this slide was, uh, one just for me to show the difference between that, what a bloody tumor looks like, or what a non-bloody tumor looks like. And then the other thing is, the bloody tumors to me look scarier, like almost like a, a worse prognosis. But really, these are the, you know, the, the eyes behind maybe red, and that's actually Mets. So, oh, is that Mets? Yeah, it's a crazy looking picture, but of Mets. I think typically maybe a uh, multifocal um, lesions is not as common as a, as just one. Yeah, lesion. Mets usually is a single big one. Yeah, but um, anyway. yeah, we and, uh, and then there's a plug for my YouTube channel if you don't know about it. With Chris, guest star. Have you, have you, know what, have you seen the Propendi Tree, Dr. Cohen? No, I'll have to go on. I think I'm subscribed. No, 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 not my video. <laughs> no. are, you, are you familiar with the phenomenon? Well, uh, for, no. Uh, so I'll show oh, is you. that that's an optical illusion thing? No, it's just a, it's an entire phenomenon where you see your, um, you see not only your retinal vascular stuff, but you see your retina as well. I'll show you oh. a stunt lamp. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. That's really cool. Yeah. That's it. All right, thanks. Okay, bye. All right. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.